It's good? Alright, so let's turn to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Uh, this, this should be a familiar passage, familiar story. And it's a beautiful story of a woman who loved the Lord and gave all that she had. And that she did what she could do uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Mark chapter 14, and we'll look at verse 3 to 9. Mark chapter 14, verse, verse 3. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor, and they murmur against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble you her? She has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She, she has done what she could. Amen. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. So if you know the background of the story, uh, this is the Mary, not the mother of Jesus, but Mary of Bethany, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And Jesus is the guest of honor at this gathering. And as he sits, uh, Mary enters the room with an alabaster box of very precious ointment. So if you want to know more of this passage, then you could read John chapter 12 and also Matthew 26. Very precious ointment, a pound of ointment, a spike, are very costly. And this was used as a fragrance or perfume. And in verse 5, you see here that this could have been sold for more than 300 pence. So the idea you want to get is that the 300 pence in those days was about the equivalent of a year's salary for a common worker. So one year's uh, work salary, uh, we could see that Mary has dedicated that to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 3, we see that she broke the box and poured it on the head of Jesus. And she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment, according to John chapter 12. And there's another passage like this in Luke chapter 7, but that's different. As how many times did Jesus go into the temple to cleanse the temple? Once or more than once? So more than once. So as far as him being anointed, it happened more than once as well. Chapter 7 in the book of Luke is beginning of Jesus' ministry. And the passages in Mark chapter 14, John chapter 12, and Matthew 26 is at the end of his, end of his ministry, just before the Passover. So if you notice here, whenever, whenever you try to do something for the Lord, there's always going to be an opposition, as you see here. And we know that this is Judas who stirred up the other disciples. Uh, so I'm glad that while you're here, you have a good spirit. And it just takes one person to, just, uh, to bring down the spirit as well. So I hope and I pray that everybody here will still have a sweet uh, spirit and a sweet attitude for the Lord. Okay, so that's the background of it. And the uh, title of the message is Break That Alaba Alabaster Box. Break That Alabaster Box. So this is a great picture that reveals what Jesus expects from every one of us in the realm of service. And let's look at verse 8 again. She has done what she could. She is come beforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. So that's the Lord Jesus Christ's evaluation on what she had done. So if the Lord Jesus Christ were to evaluate right now of what you've done for him, how would he evaluate you? 
it doesn't matter about others' opinion. As we see, Judas and the other disciples gave their opinion. Lord Jesus Christ did not agree to their opinion. Or Lord Jesus Christ had his own thought. How many times have we Christians been swayed by other people's opinions and not the thought of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Many times. And they murmured and they complained and they got angry for what she had done. My question to them is, what have you guys done for the Lord Jesus Christ? Right? And for you as well, what have you done for the Lord Jesus Christ? We see Pastor Jin and other brethren shouting, screaming, and doing all this stuff. And you might think it's a waste or waste of energy or embellishment. But my question to you, what kind of heart do you have that made you say that, those kind of things? So you need to get right with God. And for us Christians, the Lord gives, us, gives to us the sum of what He expects from us as far as our service and sacrifice is concerned. The breaking of the alabaster box pictures what our service is to be for Him. So let's look at certain things about this act and what is expected of us. So point number one, point number one, service is a life broken and poured out on Jesus. Service is a life broken and poured out on Jesus. So take a look at verse six. So the most important emphasis you could see here is found in verse six where Jesus says at the uh, ha second half of the verse, she has wrought a good work on who? On me, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't the other people, but directly Him. Yeah. Directly Him. The Bible says in Colossians 3.23, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. So, as I mentioned, the disciples had already given their opinion on what they uh, thought of her service. They didn't want her. They didn't like the fact that she anointed the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't even theirs. Who cares? Yes. Right? It was, yeah. it was, it's hers. Yes. And then she could do whatever she wants. And if she wants to use that or sacrifice that for the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's her business. You don't have, the disciples didn't have any uh, privilege or it wasn't their uh, so what's the word? Uh, yeah, it wasn't their problem or none of their business uh, to mind what she was doing, right? So whenever you are doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ, there are always going to be opposition. And then since the COVID time, you have experienced that, not, from, not only from your family members, friends, your work, but also from your church people, right? And that really hurts. And I'm sure that Mary because she was a human being, probably that hurt her too. Uh, think about the, the close disciples, yeah. right? The close disciples, all of a sudden, maybe they were gonna shout and, wow, great work, Mary. But it's, instead of cheering on and commanding her, right. why, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Don't do that. This is the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't anoint him with that perfume. Don't anoint him with that oil, right? Have more dignity. Don't wash your, wash your hair, wash the Lord's feet with your hair. You could do better than that. You could cook, cook him some good meals. You could bring more people to the house so that the people could listen, right? It was their idea of how they thought how the Lord should be worshipped, right? God can use anything and anybody in any circumstance uh, to praise Him to receive worship. As I mentioned, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to whom? The Lord, not man, Lord first, right? Lord and not unto man. And thinking logically, right? Maybe some of you thought, well, maybe the disciples were right, right? 300 pence, right? Could have, could have helped so many people, right? Tax the rich and give it to the poor. You know, and all those things. However, Lord's thoughts are not our thoughts. Lord's thoughts were not the disciples' thoughts. So, so service is not so much what you do for anyone else. Service is taking your life and breaking it and pouring it out in love and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. So she poured out her life. Remember, she gave all that she had. And it was very costly, very costly, very precious, 
for example, I want to touch upon this. The Lord Jesus Christ, as we sang, He had to shed His precious blood, right? To redeem the whole mankind. And Mary, she broke what was precious to her. Very precious to her. But for the Lord Jesus Christ, she was able to do it. She was able to do it. John Wesley said, Lord, just let me become a flame and burn up for Jesus. That's what John Wesley said, burn up for Jesus. Can you make that declaration to the Lord Jesus Christ? So what does the Lord expect? Point number two, the Lord expects us to do what we can. What we can. Uh, one of the things Dr. Raman mentioned while well, in PBI, he, he mentioned, don't be like him. Don't be like him. God called him to preach and to teach and to kick people because God called him to do that. Yeah. And unfortunately, there are brethren who thought they could be like Dr. Raman or even better than Dr. Raman, yeah. correct them uh, and all that. Oh, he's too old, he's seen that, I could do better, right? But what, what do we know? They're not in, the, they're not in church, they're not, they're not doing anything for the Lord. Right? So we looked at Jesus' evaluation of Mary's work in verse 8. Right? As I mentioned, Mary didn't win many people unto Christ, or like Martha, cook the best meal for the Lord. But she showed her love and devotion by sacrificing the most precious thing that she possessed. Okay? Even though it might not have been the best in the sight of the people, in the people, the Lord said, she has wrought a good work on me. So what I want to encourage you is that whatever you do for the Lord Jesus Christ and you do it with all of your heart, don't let other people sway you from doing that. You might get discouraged a little bit, but as long as it's scriptural and you have the heart for the Lord Jesus Christ, do it. Do it. You have to do it. Unless you do it, how are you going to know whether the Lord's going to get the glory or not? At the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord was expecting you to do certain things and He gave you grace to do those certain things but because you are swayed by people or swayed by people's opinions or swayed by people's thoughts swayed by people's looks or their eyesight or how they perceive you you didn't do it, right? Especially young people with peer pressure, right? It's hard, I know it's very hard, right? But you gotta break the alabaster box if you wanna really dedicate yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So another application. God has given each and every one of you certain gifts. Some God has given a lot of gifts. And praise the Lord for that. And some maybe one or two. It's totally okay. Maybe you don't know what He's given you so far. But God has given you something. Some of you might not be able to sing loud or well or, or sing in tune. But it doesn't matter. As long as you have voice and you have the heart, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God appreciates that. Okay? God doesn't seek out professionalism. God seeks out realism. God seeks out faithful people. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. So there are spiritual gifts according to the Bible and other gifts. And that you may be speaking. Some of you are very good at speaking, very eloquent. And that you try to use that gift that God has given unto you and try to witness to other people. Some of you uh, might not be as good, right? But some of you are very uh, good at encouraging people. Right? Some of you are very encouraging and uplifting the brethren. Some of you are very good at leadership. Some of you are good at craftsmanship. So especially in our church, hopefully Lord willing, but since a couple of years ago, uh, from the King James Jubilee, you guys know what happened to our septic tank, right? Uh, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some of you know, especially ladies, right? And Pastor Kim was all stressed out, right? And his hair was kind of, oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> graying more and then... <laughs> some patches or something, right? Those things are happening, but thank God for the brethren, craftsmanship, behind the scenes. And, and that's a gift. Yeah, it's a, it's a great gift. And some of you are able to teach, uh, some of you are able to heal. Oh, be careful. I'm not saying you lay your hands on someone and then they get healed. I wish, I wish someone, someone could do that and then to touch their hands on Brother Tom so that he don't have to go through that, but... But that's not reality. Even if Apostle Paul couldn't do it, so who would who, who, be able to do that, right? And then some people have the gift of tongues. And then when, I talk, when I'm talking about tongues, 
gift of language, right? Some people could speak many different languages, and some interpreting tongues, right? Some able to just interpret the tongues. For example, like my brother and brother Joseph, whenever Pastor Stevenson and other brothers, brothers come, they'll be translating, right? That's a gift of interpreting tongues. And God has given each and every one of you a certain type of gift. Don't ever think that you don't have a gift, right? Don't ever think that you don't have a gift. Yeah, use it. If you don't know, ask someone. Maybe they might say, wow, you're pretty good at this. Have you thought about it? Or you just ask the Lord. And he'll, he'll tell you. Instead of saying, I can't preach. Instead of, I can't teach. Instead of saying, I can't sing. Instead of, I, I can't go to Israel. I'm slow speech. Uh, there's a lot of people doing it. Just send Aaron. Right? Instead of doing that, he'd be like Isaiah. Here am I, send me. I'm not the most eloquent person. I'm not the strongest person. I'm not the healthiest person. I'm not the tallest person. But I know that if I were to give myself unto the Lord Jesus Christ, I know you can use me. It just takes one person for God to receive all the glory and honor. For some of you, you have uh, lost family members, and, and I sympathize with you. But it just takes one person, and that person is you already. So you don't have to be so discouraged because the brothers and sisters all around you have lost family members or friends or some close ones, right? But what are you going to do? Are you going to just say, send Aaron? You got to take it upon yourself, like Mary. Or is, is their soul precious? Their soul is precious in the sight of God. And you got to have, you got to, Allow the mind of Christ that is in you to dictate how you think as well. Every soul is precious. Every person here is precious. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ was able to save you. And in the future, God's continuing, God is going to continue to save people. And you want to be one of those people that could say, I broke my alabaster box for you, Lord God. I don't really have much. I'm not rich. I don't have all this stuff. But by the grace of God, I am, I am that I am by the grace of God. Amen. 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 And that you heard Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Some of you, I understand, you're shy, you're timid, but Romans chapter 1 verse 16, right? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Right? The Lord Jesus Christ wasn't ashamed of you. That's why he was able to die and then save you from hell. Mary wasn't ashamed of Jesus Christ, right? Regardless of what the disciples or others were thinking about her, maybe Lazarus or Martha or Simon the leper, it didn't matter. There are people in the house, but she anointed the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the Bible, there's only one person who anointed the Lord Jesus Christ the way she did. It was her, no one else. Remember, there are ladies, women, who wanted to go and then anoint the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. But guess what? Too late. He's risen. Amen. Right? Yeah. So you have the opportunity right now to whatever the Alec Baxter box is, just break it. Yeah. Some of you have been holding the Alec Baxter box. You are about to break it, but something happened. Right? Maybe it was the world. Maybe it was the devil. Maybe it was the flesh. Or maybe it was other Christians. Right? But you got to break the alabaster box. Yeah. <laughs> so you might say that I'm not eloquent, I'm shy, I'm timid. But I'm glad. Mojo review here. Man, I love the attitude of witnessing and the talking about souls and the hearing testimony uh, weekly of someone getting saved, like Brother Richard and Sister Tracy. Uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. That lifts up the other brethren. However, it doesn't mean that other brothers and sisters do not like what you're doing and serving the Lord. Don't let that deter you from serving Him. Yes. King David, Amen. King David, I mean, when the Ark of the Covenant came back, he shouted, he screamed, right? He, was, he wasn't going to turn his back on the Lord Jesus Christ. So... He took, took off some of his garments and then he was flying, he was jumping, he was singing 67 multiple times and his wife was embarrassed. But he, he didn't allow any of those things to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. So what you can do is people around you, you can send emails, you can pass out tracks, you can text, you can use the social network, you could just link the YouTube links, right? Or if you cannot do that, how about cleaning the church? And some of you guys are cleaning the church, and praise the Lord for that. Or if you are very outgoing, when you people come, making them feel welcome, just saying hello, just saying hello, right? And the, how are you doing? That goes long ways. And just when a, when a brother and sister, you know they're going through a hard time, just encouraging them, right? I'm really praying for you, brother. I'm praying for your family. And that will go a long ways. That will go a long ways. So you can do something for the Lord, whether you're 5 years old, 10 years old, 20, 30, 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll stop there. <laughs> you're all young. You all look young in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you can, so the Lord expects you to do what you can. And point number, uh, point number three, the Lord expects us to do it all. Do it all. Mary did not have two alabaster box. She had one. She gave it, she gave it at all. And it's, it's, it's going to be something very precious and costly. And right now, maybe God is molding you to the point where He's getting you ready for you to break the alabaster box. Maybe for these children, they might not know, but God has an alabaster box for each and every one of us, one of you. And He wants to see how serious, serious you are in serving Him. Especially in the Asian culture, education, job, ambition, money, college, career are huge, right? And you get a lot of pressure, right? I understand that, being an Asian. But can you give up those things to bring good work on Christ? Amen. Uh, Mary brought, brought a good work on Christ Himself. Directly. Not indirectly. Directly. So can you give up those things to bring good work on Christ? Can you be edified? So we'll look at some examples. Those who were able to break their alabaster boxes, box and those who weren't able to break their alabaster box. The young rich ruler, the Bible says, whom Jesus loved. Whom Jesus loved. The Lord Jesus Christ wants people to be saved more than any of us, right? That's why he manifests his love on Calvary's cross. Um, but however, it's up to the individual whether they want to get saved or not. Mark chapter 10, verse 21 and 22. So the rich young ruler followed the law. And the, when, when the rich young ruler basically mentioned to the Lord Jesus Christ that he followed all the law, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, no, you didn't, you liar. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't even mention that because he was. Not all rich people are bad. There are some rich people who are really godly, That's right? right? Sure. And Mark chapter 10, verse 21, that Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, the alabaster box. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. So he had a decision. That alabaster bo box that Jesus Christ just mentioned to him, he had the opportunity, am I going to break this for the Lord Jesus Christ? Or am I going to break it later in life? Maybe. Mark chapter 10, verse 22. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. So you could kind of think of Jeff Bezos, maybe Elon Musk, or that kind of, we don't know how much this person had, but great possessions. Maybe like Job, right? So maybe you, you have not grown up in a household that was rich, or your parents attain to the good Ivy League schools or whatnot, but I'm asking you, yes. not your parents, I'm asking you, the Lord Jesus Christ expects, can you give up your job, your school, your ambition, your plans, your career, can you give up those things to bring good work on the Lord Jesus Christ? 
the rich young ruler couldn't break his alabaster box. Another one, family. Can you give up your family to bring good work on Christ? This is going to be pretty heavy. Abraham, let's turn to Genesis chapter 22. As I mentioned, Mary loved the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why she was able to give everything up. She worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 22, as we learned before, the word love, you could correct me, this is the first time that the word love shows up in the Bible, right? Chapter 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Mary loved Jesus. And get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. That's a heavy alabaster box right there. Miraculously, right? I mean, I see infertility patients in clinics, and sometimes it's just a miracle, like people in their mid-30s and 40s getting pregnant and all that. But 90 and 100, right? 90 and 100? Think logically, not going to happen, period. <laughs> I could guarantee. I think the record is someone in their 60s, it happened. But we're talking about someone in the 90s, right? And 100. And God's telling that person, thy son whom thou lovest. Thy son. Not sin, not your possessions, but your family. Can you sacrifice your family, your son, your daughter, your wife, your mother, your father? Can you give them up for me? And we know the story. Praise the Lord for Abraham, right? He took Abraham and Isaac, per, I mean like the ty perfect type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac laying down his life, right? And then Abraham was dead serious that's serious. He had the knife. And then well, right when he was about to, to stab Isaac, sacrifice him, the angel of the Lord showed up. What's going to happen to you is that whenever you break that alabaster box, I believe the Lord's going to show up. So right now, the Lord is not, with, not near you or you think that way because you haven't broken that alabaster box. Why is it the Lord always has to be the one giving His hand, right? Well, why don't you, yeah, give your hand to the Lord Jesus Christ? Abraham broke the alabaster box. And some of you here, Luke chapter 14, 26 and 27, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Let me ask you, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? You might say dispensationally, oh, I can't be a disciple. I'm not talking about that. Let me just ask you directly, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ right now? Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Right? Can you tell someone, yeah, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ? Some of you have given up your family, right? Some of you have really, to be in this church, have given up your family. Some of you, some of you, gotten saved, your family rejected you. And it's sad. I wish prosperity gospel is true to a certain point where once you get saved, everything gets better. However, once you get saved, things might just go sour. Yeah. Really sour, yeah. Yeah. right? Preach that, brother. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't give you the liberty or the freedom to do whatever you want or get bitter at God, yes. right? Yeah. If there was a person in the universe who had uh, whom nobody could blame uh, if he were to be bitter or to be angry it would, be, it would have been the Lord Jesus Christ but he didn't key thing is verse 27 and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple have you broken that alabaster box maybe you're not growing in the Lord maybe, maybe you are 
backslidden. Maybe the fire that you have is not there because you had the opportunity to break the alabaster box and you didn't. Or you broke the alabaster box, but now you're bitter, oh, right? Uh, yeah. That's good right. That's good. So, some of you know my brother and uh, my testimony. Some of you have been here for some time, and especially my brother. It was it was tough. Uh, coming to this church in 98, it was, it was a blessing, but God just tested us, our families, hard. Some of you know. And then, long story short, uh, our family was broken, right? And, and then, it was choose the church, right? Or leave the house, kind of a situation. But my brother basically... Uh, I just followed my brother because role model and then he just said I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ if it's if it's me or or my mom he said he'll still follow Jesus and then ever since then God has healed our family and then Stay here by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. That alabaster box being broken is not, don't take it lightly. No. Once it's broken, God yes. takes note of it and God's going to sometimes give it maybe the thorn, give, maybe drive in the thorn a little bit more. But His grace is always sufficient. Our oh, grace is always sufficient. And another one, friends and world. Can you give up your friends, f friends and the world to bring good work on Christ? You know Demas mentioned a lot. Colossians chapter 4 verse 14. Luke the beloved physician and Demas greet you. Right? They were here in camp a couple years ago, even last year. Philemon chapter 1 verse 24. Marcus Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. All right, still here. Second Timothy 4.10 For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Right? Some of you love the world too much. The music that you listen to, the people you hang out with, if you cannot converse with a brother or sister in this type of environment where everyone's going out of the way to be very nice to you, very approachable to you, something's wrong with you. Maybe you have, you have your friends or your peers or the world that you love more, right? And maybe that could be your alabaster box that you got to break. And Demas, he couldn't break the alabaster box. How about health? Some of you have some health issues, right? Can you give up your health to bring good work on Christ? Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that he might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. It is not you who is strong, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who is able to manifest himself more. And the more people can get saved, more people can get encouraged. Why? Because of your weakness, because of your sickness. So Apostle Paul, was he able to break the alabaster box? I'll say so. I'll say so. And another one, can you give up your life to bring good work on Christ? Your life. Life. 
prime example, I could, I could say the Lord Jesus Christ broke his own alabaster box to save us. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Philippians chapter 2, you read Philippians chapter 2, you see, you see the humbleness of Jesus Christ, and then because of that, I'm going to go over this, the exaltation that he received or will receive in the future. Verse 8 of Philippians chapter 2 says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Though Lord Jesus Christ, I don't think has, as of right now, has called any of you to die right now. I don't think so. But who knows, maybe that might be the alabaster box that God wants you to break. I remember reading about David Brainer, right? He died before he, needs, before he was 30. He wasn't even lead many, many Indians to the Lord. Yes. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed. He broke his alabaster box in his, when he was young. And then he wasn't able to lead many people. And some Bible believing churches, not many people, right? But you broke the alabaster box, making a commitment. God, whether you give me 10,000 people, 5,000 people, 100 people, Five people, Amen. or just nobody, I broke my alabaster Amen. box for you. Amen. I'm going to keep going for you. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, He broke His alabaster box. And then, you remember, I mentioned, Mary broke that, a pound of spikener, the ointment, very precious, very costly. The Lord Jesus Christ it cost him his precious life and the blood of Jesus Christ very precious. So it's, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. Maybe you already know what the alabaster box is. Maybe it's none of these things that I mentioned, but you know what it is. If you don't know right now, then God's going to make you know. If you want to be close to God, God's going to make you know. Right? Maybe it's your spouse. It's always the family that is either you could break or you could become stronger, right? Uh, the same, the yesterday preaching as well. No turning back, right? Amen. Following Jesus, right? Amen. Children and the wife, dead. He broke his alabaster box. Amen. Because of that, you know what happens, right? Chief gets saved. And the village whole, get, whole village probably got saved too because of that, because someone broke their alabaster box. And also, uh, Psalms chapter 116. Verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I mentioned David Brainer, uh, Hudson Taylor, Right, and I am Justin. Amen. Just unbelievable. Amen. They gave up everything. I mean, they gave up everything. Family, life, culture, and then trying to go to Southeast Asia or Asia to witness people, trying to learn their customs, and then trying to eat some nasty stuff as well, <laughs> right? Like those kind of, maybe bats or balloon, I don't know. But like those kind of stuff, I mean, <laughs> For the sake of Christ, to lead another soul into the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I recommend you read the biographies or autobiographies of those heroes of the faith. And I could say, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saying. If you were to pass by, and we have Pastor Cash Rife, and then it was just amazing. He, I could say, he personifies a, pers a soul winner with a capital S. Even before he passed away, he was able to lead, his, he lead the nurse to the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Like I say, he led thousands of people <laughs> to the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. right? And don't say, I can't do that. I can already, <laughs> I can already see, right? No, Just stop saying, I can. Why don't you say, I will do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary did not have two alabaster boxes. She had one, and she 
broke that. God doesn't want part of you. God doesn't want 99% of you. He wants 100% of you. 100%. Some of you have dedicated your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you haven't. Or it was just all cheap words, right? Shouting glory, hallelujah, hosanna. And then following day or so, crucify him. And, then, and whenever you try to break the alabaster box, there's always going to be opposition. And it might be a close one. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But what are you going to do? Are you going to keep the alabaster box? Or are you going to break the alabaster box? Break it. And also, the people's opinions, right? It, it might seem logical. It might seem very logical, right? Oh yeah, I got accepted to Harvard, right? Because I wasn't able to get accepted in this area. So people around you say, this is going to be only w one opportunity that you have. So after four years, or postgraduate six years, or doctors eight years, once you're done, you'll be back, and then you have the videos to watch, right? You can watch Pastor Stevenson, Pastor Jim Kim, Pastor Jay, Pastor Kim, uh, Pastor Randy. You can watch all their videos, and you'll come back, right? Guess what? You're not going to come back. Once God gave you an opportunity, gave you a chance, any kind of chance yeah. to first be saved, and then you basically reject those chances, light rejected becomes lightning. God gave you a, you pray to be in a Bible church. Your parents pray to be in a Bible church, and then you are in the Bible church, and then now you're saying, oh yeah, I'm going to go to Harvard. Well, you got upset to Stanford or maybe other schools in Southern California, right? But you still say, I'm gonna just go there, right? Maybe you might turn out good. Maybe you might start, maybe you start a church there, maybe. Stay on the side. Right. Amen. Amen. But your flesh is weak, according yes. to today's preaching. Yes. Flesh is weak. Yep. All of a sudden, you graduate, job is lined up for you, and guess what? Job is not lined up in the church anymore, near the church. Is lined up outside of the church. What are you going to do? Yeah, so some of you young people, yeah, consider. Serious stuff. And like Brother Josh here, right? I don't want to put him on the spot, but, you know, God said to MIT, not an easy school, but he, he wanted to stay close by. And USC, no joke either. You guys said this smart guy, right? If you, if you need help with some kind of schoolwork or something, there's a man, right? But all seriousness, like his mom and sister being in church, being a blessing, right? Strength in number. And there's no guarantee. Once you leave the church, or once you leave the body of, the, you know, body of Christ, meaning like the church brethren, right? You never know. You might... Your, your, convic your conviction might change, or the Bible might change, or the brethren might change, the church might change. You love, our, your, as far as listening to the preaching, you're not going you're, you're to have a problem, but you're not going to do anything for the Lord, just like everyone else. Just say, that's it. You could get all the fame, you could get all the PhDs, you could get all those degrees, you could get, Dr. Norman said, man die with degrees. That was pretty rough saying. But you could get make all the money, but what's that going to do, right? You haven't broken your alabaster box. Right. It sounds logical, right? It sounds logical, but that's not the thought of the Lord Jesus Christ. You could help the poor people. You could have gotten a lot of money and then maybe bought tracks and they gave pass out tracks. Lord Jesus Christ, he's, he's different. No. I'm more important than the poor. The poor is always gonna beat you, but me, I'm gonna just be here for a moment. So what's well, who are you gonna choose, right? But what's, uh, what's wonderful, though, is when the disciples, the close ones, were angry 
they're complaining, murmuring. You know who defended Mary and her decision to break the alabaster box and apply the oil to the Lord Jesus Christ? It was him. He defended her. Amen. He defended her. Amen. I'll tell you this. Everyone might turn their backs on you, but as long as you don't turn your back on the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. he's not going to turn his back on you. Amen. Guarantee you that. Guarantee you that. Right? Some of you have experienced that. The Lord Jesus Christ, advocate. You want him as your advocate. You, you do not want him as your prosecutor. You do not want him. The devil is already a prosecutor, and you don't want the Lord Jesus Christ doing double team on you. You have no chance. Right? But he's the, he's the advocate. Right? He's the defense lawyer. And you got to do what he wants you to do. Sometimes it might be difficult, but you do it. I'm not going to say it's going to be hunky-dory and then roses and all that, but I could guarantee God's not going to leave you or forsake you. Amen. He's always going to be not only in you, but with you always. Amen. And the last point. Last point. The Lord expects you to do it now. Do it now. Time is short and ever fleeting. Yes, right. And do you remember the verse, chapter 14 of Mark? Yeah. Verse 6, And Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She has done what she could. She is calm aforehand. Aforehand. So God has given some discernment to her that something was going to happen to the Lord Jesus Christ. Aforehand. Before it becomes too late, she knew she had to do something. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's what that's did she good. do? This precious box, precious ointment, precious fragrance. If I don't do this right now, it's not going to be any good in the future. So what did she do? It's going to hurt me. I'm going to lose many things. But still, it is for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And what did she do? She took upon, took upon her action. And then she broke it, she applied it, anointed to the Lord Jesus Christ on his head and on his feet, and wiped her, wiped her hair, right? We, he, she used her hair. Right, no hesitation. No one was going to stop her. Now, now is the day of salvation. If you're not saved, you better get saved today. Now, no guarantee. If, you're, if your family members are not saved, you break your alabaster box and make sure they get saved, right? You never know. They might just pass away. And because of your stubbornness, that could be an alabaster box. It could be anything, right? Anything precious, right? Mary had an insight that no one had beforehand. She understood that Jesus was going to die. So she knew that she had to anoint the Lord. The disciples, the Lord Jesus Christ had to always remind them, right? That this temple be destroyed, right? It's going to be rebuilt again. But even with that, they were all scared. That's why they were in the room all by themselves. But Mary, she knew what was going to happen. He's going to, he's going to die. He's going to rise up. Right? So he, she had confidence. I could use this for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Do you have the confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you have confidence that He's going to take care of you even though, you, even though that alabaster box be broken? As I said, there are some women... They, want, they, they wanted to be in part of history, right? Anointing the body of Jesus Christ. But it was too late. It's too late. There's going to come a time when the alabaster box is not going to be broken, and you can't break it, right? So when it's time to break that, you break that. So if you haven't done so, and the opportunity is there, break the alabaster box. If Mary would have waited, what do you think might have happened? Yeah. Lord knew her thoughts. She's kind of contemplating. Let's see. 
And then if she didn't do it that moment, baby, she would have not done it. If she waited until the circumstances were better, right? No. She did it at that moment. Circumstance, don't let circumstance hinder you from breaking the alabaster box. An interesting thing is in John chapter 12, verse 3, when you break that alabaster box, Verse 3, Then took Mary upon the ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Not only was the Lord Jesus Christ anointed, but she also had some of that anointing in her too. That ointment was, that was on the Lord Jesus Christ, she also had a little bit as well. So whenever you break the alabaster box, the Lord Jesus Christ is right there. And He knows. And Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We're almost done. The disciples, they broke their alabaster box. Right? And you'll see. Mark chapter 10. Verse 28, same passage as the rich young ruler. Then Peter, verse 28, then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Left all. Family, friends, everybody. Jesus Christ replied, and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the Gospels. Verse 30. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sister and mothers and children, lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But key first, but many that are first shall be last and the last first. Are you going to put Jesus Christ first or are you going to put him last? If you break the alabaster box, God's going to reward you. God is going to reward you. He might not reward you materialistically here, but judgment seat of Christ, the crowns, precious stones, is going to pass through the fire. And you'll be glad I broke that alabaster box. So, will you break the alabaster box tonight? Let's pray.